Geist, a uh, law professor. Uh, he's just uh, he's re rising to the top. He's becoming the cream of the crop of this issue. Regulating what Canadians see online. Why Bill C-10 would establish CRTC-approved TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram feeds. Wow. And uh, then it carries on in a large article. We recommend you go uh, check it out. Link down below. Not only is such an approach unworkable, how do regulators even identify what counts as domestic user-generated content? But it would represent an exceptionally heavy-handed regulatory approach where a government-appointed regulator decides what individual user-generated content is prioritized in order to further discoverability. A term that is even defined in Bill C-10. There is a greater need uh, no, there's a greater need for transparency of the algorithm used by social media companies. But to turn over the content choices of social media feeds to millions of Canadians to the CRTC is madness and an abdication of the government's professed support of, for freedoms of expression. Um, so, yeah, I, I, that's what he's saying. Yet again, uh, he comes through with, um, you know, the peace that defines this issue right now. have forgotten what motion we're discussing. Uh, the motion that we're discussing is one that is necessary because section 4.1 clause 3 of Bill C-10, the bill being discussed, um, was removed. And because this section was removed from the bill, um, it therefore presents the question of is this bill still compliant with the Charter of Rights and Freedoms? That is the question at hand. Um, and so that question can be answered in one way, and that is allowing this bill in its current state to go before the, um, the Justice Minister and the Justice Department for a charter review, uh, at which point then a charter statement would be granted to the committee and that charter statement would, would tell us whether or not it is charter compliant. Uh, if the Minister of Justice says, yes, it is, with section 4.1 missing, then we proceed accordingly. However, if the Justice Minister says that, no, this bill with missing 4.1 is not compliant with the charter, then um, it's incumbent upon us as members of this committee to pause and make the necessary changes to this bill to ensure that the Charter of Rights and Freedoms is in fact respected, that Canadians' freedoms are honoured. The motion that I have put forward then asks for that charter statement to be redone and to be provided to this committee. That's the motion that we are discussing. In order to get that charter statement, it would mean that committee needs to be paused where it's at right now. Now, while it is paused and we seek that charter statement, my motion suggests that we ask the Minister of Canadian Heritage and the Minister of Justice to appear before the committee. The amendment that the Honourable Member has made to my motion would suggest that the Minister of Canadian Heritage and the Minister of Justice do not come to this committee, but rather simply provide a written statement. Her amendment further suggests that instead of pausing right now in order to seek that renewed charter statement, that we would continue to debate a flawed piece of legislation and then we would seek that charter statement at the end. I would suggest that that is a misuse of our time, um, given that many, many, many experts have already spoken out and would suggest uh, have argued that this bill is deeply flawed. But one of the things that the, the, uh, the, the party in government w presents to us over and over and over again when we ask questions in the House of Commons concerning this piece of legislation, um, they often say that individual users 
are protected. Um, meanwhile, conservatives contend that that's not entirely the case now that that section 4.1 has been removed from the bill. Now, when the governing party argues this, they point to section 4.1, I mean 2.1. Now, 2.1 does say that users who upload programs onto social media sites like Facebook or YouTube or TikTok are not considered broadcasters and so are not personally subject to conditions like the Canadian content requirements or the Canadian Media Fund contributions that would be imposed by the CRTC on streaming services like Netflix or Amazon, for example. Um, that's fair. However, Section 4.1 dealt with the program, the content that individuals, you, me, your uncle, your aunt, your mom, upload to social media sites. And that 4.1 originally protected those individuals their content from being uh, regulated by the CRTC. When we removed section 4.1, when that section was removed from the bill, that protection for the content that individuals place on social media platforms was therefore taken away. So although the CRTC can't treat users, individuals, as broadcasters because of 2.1. With 4.1 gone, it can regulate the content, your mom's video, my mom's video, your uncle's video. It can regulate that content that is uploaded onto social media and perhaps even apps. And so then individuals, their content, is treated as if it's the same as CTV News or Global, which is wrong, is wrong. So let's just take a moment here because again, there seems to be some confusion in the room. Um, we seem to be discussing 2.1 as if it does what 4.1 once did. It's just not. It's just not true. 2.1 is not the level of protection that Canadians deserve. It does, it's not enough. We need, we need section 4.1. We need that section that was taken out. Again, this is, my, this is what I'm contending for. This is what many experts have said, but my motion would ask for an official opinion in the form of a charter statement. Now, let's go back here a moment. Just how could the CRTC regulate social media with clause 4.1 removed? Because that seems to be the issue at hand here. Well, using the powers in the Broadcasting Act, which is again, the point of 4.1, these powers, particularly in sections 9.1, 9.1.1 and 10.1, could provide the basis for the CRTC, among other things, to adopt regulations that would require social media sites like YouTube to take down content that it considers offensive and discoverability regulations, as Ms. DeBruzen used this term, that would make them change their algorithms to determine which videos are seen more or which videos are seen less. And the fines for violating these regulations could Point be of as order. high as... Point of order. One moment, please. Okay, sorry, Ms. Harder. Uh, sorry, I did, Mr. Housefather, was that you? Yes, it was, Mr. Chairman. I would like to ask the question of relevance. This is related perhaps to the intention of the original motion. It is unrelated to Mr. Bruzen's amendment that's now on the floor. There is no link whatsoever between this and what Mr. Bruzen proposes an amendment. Okay, folks, I'm just going to say this right now, and hopefully this clears up a lot. Um, I like to give people a fair amount of latitude as to where you can go on this. But as much as I encourage you at times to think outside the box, you can't wander outside the warehouse. 
and start drifting off into other places that we don't really need to be, given the fact that we are very focused here on, an, on a motion with its consequential amendment. So that being said, uh, Ms. Harder, I give you the floor again. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The point is that with section 4.1 removed, it does allow the CRTC to regulate the content that an individual might post on their YouTube channel or their Facebook page or a TikTok video that they might put up. Now, I have stated that I am contending this for this. I'm contending for a new charter statement. Ms. DeBruzen has put forward the amendment that we don't do that until the end of the bill. I believe that it is absolutely essential now because of the detriment or the damage that can be done to individuals and their ability to speak freely within what we now call the new public square, which is social media. And because that impact is, is so severe, we have to stop now and consider whether or not this is actually in alignment with the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, particularly with Section 2B, which of course protects thought, belief, opinion, expression. Now, that is what I'm contending for. But there are many experts who would also contend for this, who would say, whoa, this bill in its current state goes too far. And it is incumbent then upon the members of this committee to push the pause button and to seek a legal opinion. That legal opinion comes in the form of a charter statement. I'm talking about Professor Michael Geist. I'm talking about Emily Laidlaw, the former CRTC Commissioner Peter Menzies. I'm talking about many, many individuals. Point of order. Mr. Housefather. Relevance, Mr. Bruzen's amendment does not speak to removing the charter statement that is being requested, and now we're debating whether a charter statement is required or not. Right. Oh, okay. Uh, folks, I'd like to ask everyone again. I don't want to make judgment calls each and every time this happens. Uh, just when I say to someone that you can you can think outside the box a bit, I'm going to provide still provide some of that leniency, but I'm asking everyone here to focus on what's at hand. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't realize that the supposed motions that could possibly be brought forward in order to amend this bill were relevant. Meanwhile, the things that I'm talking about are in the bill as it currently stands and somehow Mr. Housefather doesn't find them relevant. I'll continue. I believe the voices of experts are worth hearing, that they are worth tuning into. And so as we consider my motion, and as we consider the amendment to the motion, um, which would try to put a pause to what I'm asking for, um, I would like to show why it is urgent that we do in fact seek this renewed charter statement. In the charter statement, originally, it directly cites the social media exemption in its argument that the bill respects Section 2B of the charter. Now, because that clause, because that section has been removed from the bill, then it can be argued and should be argued that it, the bill no longer holds up to the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Experts are warning of this. They are warning that with the amendments to the bill, that it could give too much power to the CRTC in order to regulate or control what we put on our social media pages. Again, 
an infringement on our charter rights under Section 2B, an infringement on our freedom, and therefore, I would say a thwarting of our ability to engage in what is now the public square. And that's wrong. Former CRTC Commissioner Peter Menzies said, I quote, Bill C-10 doesn't just infringe on free expression, it constitutes a full-blown assault upon it and through it, the foundations of democracy. That's a pretty big statement. That's a, that's a really big statement. It doesn't just infringe on free expression, it constitutes a full-blown assault upon it and through it, the foundations of democracy. That's big. That seems reason for moving to a charter statement immediately rather than waiting for several weeks. Furthermore, Laura Tribe, Executive Director of Open Media, had this to say. She said, voting for Bill C-10 in its current form will give the government the power to regulate speech on the internet. C-10 was supposed to be about supporting artists and creators, but this bill has totally lost the plot. Now that's interesting because in the House of Commons in question period, the minister states, or the prime minister has stated numerous times and the minister of heritage continuously states that that is what this bill is about, that it's about supporting artists and those who create content. But actually artists are able to exist and thrive when their charter of rights and freedoms are most protected. So if we move forward with this bill in its current state, and it does in fact reach the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, then actually it's not helping artists and those who are creative. It's actually applying greater restrictions to them. It's hindering them from being the creative beings that they are meant to have the ability to be. It's actually inhibiting their ability to put content out there that they would wish to put out there. So no, this doesn't support struggling artists as the government would want Canadians to think. Now, Ms. Tribe goes on to say, for a country that made a department dedicated to, quote, innovation, it's amazing to watch how regressive, overreaching, and oppressive their policies have become. This government is a straight up disaster for Canada's internet. James Turk, the director of the Center for Free Expression at Ryerson University, he said, the Trudeau government is planning to give the CRTC the right to regulate user-generated content on sites like YouTube by amending Bill C-10, a dangerous government overreach that must be stopped. Timothy Denton, who was a former national commissioner at the CRTC from, 20, from 2009 to 2013, he said this, the freedom to communicate across the internet is to be determined by political appointees on the basis of no other criterion than what is conducive to broadcasting policy and presumably the good of our domestic industry. As Point always, order. the interest of the beneficiaries of Point regulation. Of order. Okay, one, one moment, one moment. Mr. Husfather, point of order. M Mr. Chairman, I would again come back to the fact that this is entirely unrelated in Mr. Bruzen's amendment. We are now speaking to Mr. Bruzen's amendment. I appreciate the latitude, but this is now going- Mr. Housefather. Far afield. When she started, she started, she started talking about the Charter, the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, of which Mr. Bruzen's amendment at the very first paragraph eliminates in its entirety, right? Now I'm sorry, but I'm gonna let her finish with what she just said. But I, I'd like to ask Ms. Harder, I don't know where she's going with the, with, the, with the testimony of the person that she just brought up, but try to keep it within the confines of what you see is Mr. Bruzen's amendment contained. Thank you very much, Ms. Harder. Since I got interrupted, let me re-begin with that quote. The freedom to communicate across the internet is to be determined by political appointees on the basis of no other criterion than what is conducive to broadcasting policy, and presumably the good of our domestic industry, 
As always, the interests of the beneficiaries of regulation are heard first, best, and last. Consumers and individual freedoms count for little when the regulated sector beats its drums. For the narrow clique of broadcasters, Canon producers, and their lobbyists, it is always all about broadcasting. For Canadians, however, it is about the right to use the internet to communicate. We do not need to have our freedom of speech squelched by a government determined to protect an obsolete industrial structure. Forget about broadcasting. C10 is clearly intended to allow speech control at the government's discretion. Ignore the turn signals, look at where the wheels are pointed. They are pointed at your right to communicate freely by means of the internet. Dwayne Winsick, who is a professor at the School of Journalism at Carleton University, director of the Canadian Media Concentration Research Project. He states, I support the idea that online video on demand, OVOD, services can be regulated as Bill C-10 contemplates. But the bill was already a mishmash of dishonest representation of OVOD services as broadcasting. They are not. Proposed amendments adopted unanimously at the committee would drop that distinction and sweep user-generated content under the new Broadcasting Act. A terrible idea, not least because it subjects individual expression to the greatest low. Without these guide rails, the disk of C10 is being driven by lobby groups and think tanks tied to incumbent telecom and media industries in interest and the Liberal government and tiny group of academics poorly versed in the terrain they seem to have gained unwarranted authority to speak on. Emily Laidlaw, Canada Research Chair in Cybersecurity Law and Associate Professor of Law at the University of Calgary. She has this to say, while broadcasting regulations used to be about programming related, all, related to all our favorite TV shows, news, sports, it would now cover that home video of your kid winning a track meet that you uploaded to YouTube. Here's the free speech problem. Bill C-10 forces social media companies to censor speech. While you might think, hey, it's a cesspool and we should clean that up. Remember, this is broadcasting regulation, not all the other regulatory questions about online harms, platform power, or data protection. Why does it force social media companies to be censors? Because of the regulation it requires. The only option to comply with Bill C-10 is for social media to heavily regulate content. She goes on to say, I am genuinely shocked by this. What does subjecting individual YouTube videos to CRTC regulation achieve in terms of regulatory objective? These kinds of blunt approaches wreak havoc on internet governance, especially through a human rights-centered lens. Again, I would draw this committee's attention to her a very important words there, human rights-centered lens. Here in Canada, our rights are largely guided by the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. And that charter under section 2B, and I I have a copy, just in case. Now, Mr. Housefather, please don't call a point of order. It's just the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. It says this, everyone has the following fundamental freedoms. A, freedom of conscience and religion. B, freedom of thought, belief, opinion, and expression, including freedom of the press and other media of communication. Huh, interesting. C, freedom of peaceful assembly, and D, freedom of association. Let me draw your attention to B again, which of course is the subject at hand. Freedom of thought, belief, opinion, and expression, including freedom of the press and other media of communication. This is our charter. This is our charter. This is Canadian charter. This is the document that was put in place by the former Trudeau in order to protect 
our rights and our freedoms as Canadians. The responsibility of this committee is not to kowtow to industry stakeholders. The responsibility of this committee is to adhere to the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms and contend for Canadians. They are the ones who elected us. They are the ones who have entrusted us with the responsibility to advocate for them. For this committee to continue forward without taking this responsibility seriously is shame on us. To suggest that we should just continue ramming this legislation through, that we should just continue considering one clause after another without giving sober second thought to whether or not this legislation does indeed continue to abide by the charter is wrong. Mr. Michael Geist, he's a lawyer. Point of order, Mr. Chair. One moment, please. Uh, Madame Lalonde, was that correct? Yes, Point Mr. Order. Chair. Go ahead. Uh, listen, I was wondering, I, I would like to do the relevance of, of Mrs. Harder's uh, comments, but also could you please read us back the uh, um, what we're actually debating uh, Mrs. DeVerson about, if you could just read actually that motion to see the relevance of Mrs. Harder's uh, towards her, 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 her school versus what I understand Mrs. DeVerson's motion was. As don't forget to like, dislike, subscribe, and comment. Safe Space Cafe. And always, have a good day.